greeting of the day in today's class we are going to talk about uh, a forging processes in previous class we have seen about the types of bulk for deformation process on the bulk deformation process we have seen about uh, rolling treatments and types of rolling we have seen such as uh, types of rollings likewise uh, some thread rolling or ring rolling we have seen in now today's class we are going to see about the forging also the deformation process in which work is compressed between two dies it is compressed between two dies the same as like rolling here also instead of a roller die the die is in the format of roller here we have a die of flat or any other impressionist shapes world history method which is used from 5000 bc that is okay and the components engine crankshaft connecting rods gears and aircrafts this we have to understand though it is useful to it, you make in applications to create the crankshaft the connecting rods the gears and those things and also structural components jet engines the turbine parts so we are, we are using everywhere all parts we are using with respect to easy method of forging here i am classifying in the similar same format like rolling operations such as maybe a hard forging operations or maybe a cold forging operations we are using now you see this hard working is the most common because why this most common because you see here it can able to less the force as because it is in the red hot condition we can able to give less force in such a way it can able to convert from one form to another but here in the cold working we need we need more more force are needed so that is all done so you see most commonly due to significant deformation and need to reduce the strength and increase the ductility of the workpiece increase the ductility means we can able to change the shape easily because it is ductile in nature it is going to be ductile in nature it is going to be ductile in nature when it is at a hot working condition therefore we are creating heat there therefore we are getting the hot working cold working advantage in increasing the strength because we are compressing cold working we are compressing volume is not changed and all the, all the grains are compressed if the grains are compressed it is tightly bonded we obviously we are going to get strength so therefore increasing strength that results in the strain hardening operations also therefore, uh, therefore here we need it therefore here we need it uh, heat treatment heat treatment needed Right. Impact is a press forging, other hot working, forge, hot forging, cold forging, and other parts we are using. What are the this? This will put the category in there. How we are pressing the forging can be taken place when the heavy load has been falling over there. That is the forging operations. Object is kept at the bottom. And heavy load is going to fall over there. It is going to hit there. That, that hitting is a forging operation. Therefore, how we are doing? We can able to do by forging hammers. It means that taking the hammer and the high force we are hitting. That is forging hammers. No. I in case or otherwise I am doing by pressing action. I kept inside. Die. Material and I'm slowly pressing. What happens? That is also a forging. That this is nothing but a press forging. I'm calling this as a press forging. Hitting and calling as a hammer forging process. So that are two categories. So I'm connecting this hammer forging, maybe a cold forging. This hammer forging, maybe a hot forging. Or otherwise, or otherwise this. Press forging may be a cold forging, or otherwise this press forging may be a hot forging operations. Anything it can be. So this uh, combinations will come. Generally, hot and cold is there to everyone. Everything. 
here we have to concentrate on forcing hammers and forcing whether it is a press forcing process or there is a hammer forcing process now not only with respect to these hammers and presses but also with respect to types of dies we have taken a die and then i have filled the component here and then i'm using a hammer i'm using a hammer here i'm using hammer here to press so this hammers this operation this material maybe this material may be hot or otherwise cold this is one part now this hammer operation can be given maybe hammering it means a huge dropping force dropping force we are giving when we drop or otherwise this can be this can be a press we can do so hot and cold forging operations in, in terms of i am dividing the working process in this term i am dividing the working process in that term and also this die process you see the die is in the shape of closed nowhere the blades are trying to come out it is not possible to come out it should come after the therefore in terms of die also i am dividing in terms of die i am dividing in terms of die maybe this open die maybe open die maybe impression die it means in what shape it is in what shape the die is going to keep maybe open die impression die or flashless die so in this three categories i can able to divide this forging treatment with respect to hot or cold with respect to hammering treatment with respect to type of die so i am doing in simple in generally hot or cold hot dispress or general so i am i am dividing this into open impression and flashless forging at first so now number one i have taken as open die forging that is work is comparison between two flat dies two flat dies allowing metal to flow laterally without any constraint this word is very important without any constraint without any constraint what is without constraint we have to see here it means the object which we are going to do one day is fixed open die the name says it is open die so the die is open this brown color represents the workpiece i have kept in between i am going to give a force i am going to give a force we are not talking about force the force may be hammering force force may be a press force also force may be a press force also therefore i am talking about this die count die classifications so when this open die when this pressing action is done when the pressing action is done the material the workpiece which is at red hot condition or cold working condition it is ready to deform in this direction and it is ready to deform in this direction it is free to move there is no restrictions that is called as die is open now i am going to close the die you see that is a, called as a flow laterally without any constraint so it is without moving no constraint is there in case the die is like this what will happen you see in case the die is like this in case the die is like this in case the die is like this format it has some constraint it cannot move from the top we are pressing and this cannot be able to move left or right there's a constraint but open die forcing we are not constrained so that is open that is i have drawn now now impression die forcing die surface contains the design Die surface contains the cavity. So see here, this is the die. One is fixed die, and top die. This die is contain some designs. This die contains some design in this forward. Some tumbles forward design we have. Accordingly, according to the design, it is going to come. It is going to pressure on the prevented pressure supply. This workpiece by the impression 
will get these images there. So our product is going to get the impression. So that is called as impression die forging. Then flashless forging. You see, the image is very, very, very easily we can understand. Here, one die having completely closed. One die having completely closed. Die is inside. It is a full constraint. It is a full constraint. Here it is no constraint. Here we have some semi constraints are there. Here it is full constraint. It cannot, it cannot be able to go out. It, it is to be there. And this die contains some design like this, like this, like this. It comes contains some design. According to design, it is going to impress. But here it got the chance to move lightly, lightly here. So semi constraint, no constraint, semi constraint, full constraint. That we are naming as a open die forging, impression forging, and a flashless forging. Open die forging, work is composed between two flat dies, allowing the metal to flow readily without constraint. Compression of the work part in the cylinder cross section between the two flat dies, similar to the compression test, similar to just like compression test we have done. Work piece is kept in between, and we have pressing action has been done. It is free to move. The die is open. So that is what here you see. At initial condition, this is flatted state. We have a state connection here. This is a, this is fixed. Now, I have kept a large H0 height specimen here. The force has been applied. This thickness, you see, this thickness, you see, this thickness is getting wider. And again, it is getting wider. But what happens to the height? Height is going to Height from here it is from here it is keep on reducing. You see, keep on reducing. When the force is applied, it is keep on reducing. In terms of open type, width is going to increase. Height is reduced, width is going to increase. In such a way, this open type forging will be useful. No constraint. That word is very important. Without constraint, it is moving. Open type, what is the limitations here? Limited to simple shape, impressions are not generated, designs are not generated, just we have thickness reduction, height reduction, maybe width increasing, simple forms only, no other impressions are generated. Difficult to hold the closer tolerance. What is this closer tolerance? You see, when the pressing is applied, if I need only 10 mm wider. I have kept inside the specimen thickness, maybe width, maybe this width of 8 mm. And I want a width of 10 mm. What I have to do? I want to put a constraint there. This is a 10 mm. So I have a constraint of this is a 10 mm. But what happens due to force supply, there's no restrictions, there's no constraints, it is keep on enlarging. It's keep on enlarging, it's keep on enlarging. Therefore, it is not possible to maintain a dimensional tolerance. So there's no close tolerance we are getting. Instead of, instead of 10 mm, we are getting 11 mm. With this increased, because there's no restrictions. It is open to free to move anywhere. Like when you're flowing your water in the tunnel, it is stressed there. When the water flowing on the floors, it goes everywhere. It is free to move. Such cases. So needs to be machined and to the final shape. If it is increasing out to the 1 mm, we have to grind and have to machine out. So such case, low production rate. So slowly, slowly we have to give open and again secondary operations of uh, second grinding, those things we have to do. So poor utilization of the materials and high skill operated. If all these things to be avoided, if all these things to be avoided, it is related to the skilled worker. You have to maintain the 11 mm, you have to give the proper force applied, you have to maintain this uh, readily deformable hot temperatures. If it is more temperature, it is going to be ducted, it is going to deform more. If it is less uh, hotter, it is going to, it is not going to deform, it is going to receive more force. So such uh, skilled workers are needed here. Next, impression die forging. Compression of the work part by die with investment of dispersal parts. So you see, this forms of forging is used to make more complicated parts like blanket box marks. Blanks are compressed between two or more die shapes on the part. Once the part is shaped, flash is removed by either grinding, 
here also either grinding or otherwise the trimming action of machining action what i am doing here i have i am talking about the impression die forcing so it has some design there what are the design you say the design is in this format so the design is in this format i need this design on the fixed on upper one i need this design i have a design and i am pressing but here also constraints are less semi constrained here also material can come here material can come here materials are coming here materials are moving here but the object we are getting this is the object which is and this one is the object this one is the object but a little bit there it is coming out this is a semi constrained impression die forcing how we can tell see this is impression the bottom die top die have some impressions have some designs so with respect to the design when it is pressed it is falling over the work piece which are kept there this can be done at a hard working conditions hard working conditions are possible see some designs they have framed the impressions are already available instead of this design see here the how about the design here the design is like this here the design is like this instead of design we can have the such designs then obviously when work piece is pressed pressing action has been done this design has to be fall on the product final product how it will look like product will look like like this so similarly like this also like this the product will be so this product will comes like this so such uh, designs uh, practices we should do so in present for the advantage is high production rate because it is uh, secondary operations are less in the various metal less waste are getting greater strength also compression force greater strength favorable for grain orientations limitations not capable for close tolerance here is also not suitable because it's little bit small flashes are coming so it's not suitable for close tolerance machining often required machines are often required to remove the achieved occurrence of the feature so here also we should remove this is scrap items which are coming outside we should remove if it is increasing decreasing we should remission those process how to be done at last the third one flashless forging the name says everything the flashless what i am doing you see the specimen itself keep it inside the die this is a large die this is a large die over here you see this is a large die over here and the specimen kept inside is lesser than that of volume is volume of the gap volume of the die cap is large but volume of the work piece is small you see here we have kept and the work and the force what we are what we are going to apply is the block here there is no there is no chance of work piece after deformation to exit out where it will go we have not kept opening is not there then where it should go simply it should change its form and occupy this volume that's the only chance there so we have kept here and now i am pressing action i am pressing i am pressing so after that first initially it is changing the shape of like the some roller forward so here we can see some few few gaps are there after that further when we are pressing action from here how we can do the pressing actions so from here high to we are keep on reducing you see keep on reducing high to low it is keep on pressing action is going inside this is flat yeah this is flat in the fixed way a constant state and it is force is applied over there so from the height design shape change finally we are getting a one final product in the rectangular format so finally we are fully completely filled you see no gap this volume of the work piece converted into the volume of the die after pressing so here it is changed like this so likewise we can able to do so starting work apart volume was equal to die cavity volume within very close tolerance we can maintain the tolerance here because there is no chance of moving out of the metal nowhere it is restricted inside therefore we can able to do this so flash as forcing just before initial contact with work pieces partial compression partial compression final punch and the die is has been done so best is suited for a part geometry that is simple and symmetrical concepts so the summary 
In today's class regarding bulk deformation process, we have seen about the rolling we have seen already. The bulk deformation rolling is one of the category. And then in our one more category we have seen about forging. In forging, I have divided the forging operation into hot and cold working process. Or the forging operation I divided into depending upon types of dies. Here I have again divided the type of die into open die, impression die. Otherwise, the flashless die. This is this forging with respect to hot or cold, forging with respect to type of die, forging with respect to type of force applied. How much it is a force? Maybe a drop hammers. Otherwise, the presses. In this press, we have seen this drop hammers may be a gravity, otherwise the power. This process may be mechanical or maybe hydraulic. Mechanical means with the cam operations, the crankshaft operations. So hydraulic, maybe pneumatic. A screw. So such cases we have divided and we have seen the types of forging treatments. The remaining part of the subject, we'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Open die forging is performed on ingot, billet, bar, or a preform, and is the deformation of a workpiece between flat or shaped dies without completely restricting metal flow. This deformation can result in lengthening of the workpiece while reducing its cross-section, upsetting regions along the length to greater sizes than adjacent regions, or bulging the workpiece's cross-section while reducing its length. Lengthening and upsetting are typically done using multiple impacts as the workpiece is incrementally advanced lengthwise and rotated about its longitudinal axis. There is essentially no limit to the size of forgings that can be made using open die forging. They can range from a few centimeters to 30 meters in length and weigh from a few to up to several hundred thousand kilograms. Although fairly complex shapes can be made using open die forging, most are rather simple solids or hollows requiring considerable machining to achieve final shape. 